Dajjal would be able to prove himself, Nauzu Billah, as the God of the people. Imagine that hardly there would be anybody who would not join him. Even today, and I'd state it that you are the you are the one eyed Dajjal that Prophet Muhammad warned us about. And he would have a paradise with him. And he would have a hellfire with him. Dajjal would bring out a huge saw. And then divide that person into two pieces from top to toe. And there would be some people, the companions of Imam al-Mahdi that would be saved from fitna of Dajjal. He would be able to make the dead people alive. The money that you are holding in your pocket, you think it is yours. But my friends, this is the money that any time the Federal Reserve Bank or the current monetary system can take right out of your pocket and you won't even know. So if Imam al-Mahdi was born back then, he must be of age right now to appear any time. Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, just like uh, every time I expect nobody and somebody uh, just comes out of the blue. Thank you very much for coming, Umar and uh, Ayan, and inshallah hope more people would join. Uh, uh, and uh, I would like to um, mention again that we hold this uh, weekly event uh, in Kachnar Park, Islamabad, uh, in Sector I-8. Uh, this is Sunday and uh, early morning at 6, 6 a.m. we hold the lecture in English. And the topic is uh, Fitna e Dajjal or the trial and the tribulations of uh, Antichrist. Uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, actually Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once climbed on one of the castles and one of the buildings of Medina and then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that are you people witnessing or seeing the same thing that I am seeing and then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued and he said I am seeing the fitnas and the trials and tribulations falling upon your homes just like just like the drops of the rain and then in another hadith prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that soon there would be fitnas there would be trials and tribu tribulations in such fitnas the person sitting would be better than the person standing and the person standing would be better than the person walking and the person walking would be better than the person running and even if a person looks into them looks towards them would become what they would they would just drag that person into themselves and in such a situation if one finds a place of shelter should should catch that shelter one of the companions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat huzaifa bin yaman he used to ask prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the fitnas and the trials and tribulations and hazrat huzaifa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that O oh people I know about the fitnas and the trials and the tribulations more than all of you. And then he continued and saying that there are three fitnas, three trials that would leave nothing. Focus on the words. Hazrat Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu is saying that I know about all of the fitnas and the trials and the tribulations and I used to ask them from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam out of those fitnas and trials and tribulations three would be such that they would leave nothing and then there would be some that would be like the hot winds of the summer and in such fitnas and trials and tribulations, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says what? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that 
that I I tell you about the fitna of the jal. I warn you of the fitna of the jal. Just like every other prophet before me warned his people about fitna of the jal, about the fitna of antichrist. Prophet Nuh alayhi salam also warned his people, made his people aware of fitna of the jal. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam continues in saying that I would tell you about the fitna of the jal, something that no prophet has told you, told his people before. And that thing is that the jal or the antichrist would be one eyed. One of his eyes would be fine and the other eye would be would be he would be blind from the other eye. And then and all of the hadith I'm quoting to you are from Bukhari and Muslim. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another hadith of Bukhari Sharif said that I'm telling you about, about fitna of Dajjal something that no prophet has told before and that is that Dajjal would be one-eyed and also Dajjal would bring with him something that is like Jannah, that is like paradise and another thing that is like the hellfire, that is like Jahannam. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues in saying that the thing he would call Jannat or the paradise would actually be Jahannam or the hellfire and the thing he would call the paradise or, or the thing he would call, call the hellfire or Jahannam would actually be the paradise which would actually be the Jannah. Yes, Sir, come and call me. Sir, come and participate. Come and would actually be the hellfire. And in another hadith of Bukhari Sharif, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the Jal would come out, he would have the fire and the water. And the thing that people would see as fire would actually be warm, would actually be the people that would people would see the thing that the people would see as fire would actually be the cold water the cozy cool water and the thing the people would see as the cozy cool water would actually be the hellfire would actually be the thing that would make you burn so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised the people that whoever gets the chance to encounter such a situation would actually would must choose the fire because that actually would, would be the cool water and should avoid the water because that actually be the fire we are talking about the jal and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained or introduced the Jal in such a fashion that is shocking. That is such a scary thing that if we focus on it or if we ponder upon it, we would realize that there is no such thing as fitna Dajjal on the face of earth. There would be worse, thing, worse things than the fitna of Dajjal in after life that would be the hellfire and the things in the hell but on the face of the earth the jal and its fitna its tribulation, tribulations would be the worst thing ever happened to the mankind and that is not that is not me saying that that is actually prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that in muslim sharif prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is a there is a hadith from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that that the Muslim call people for the prayer and after the prof prayer Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat on his member took his position and then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the people to stay and not leave and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was smiling and then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told people about the jal and in another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told people that, O oh people, 
There is no such fitna, there is no such trial or tribulation worse than fitna of Dajjal from the beginning of mankind, from Hazrat Adam salam until the day of Qiyamah. And every prophet warned people of fitna of Dajjal and I am warning you of fitna of Dajjal and then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued in another hadith that if any of you encounters Dajjal must recite the first 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf to in front of him. So we have learned so far that fitna of Dajjal would be such a worse thing that has that that no such thing has ever happened to fitna of, to to people on the face of earth before. And Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala would have given such powers such 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 magic or powers or such abilities to Dajjal that Dajjal would be able to prove himself Billah, as the God of the people and when will Dajjal come? Dajjal would come when people would be so comfortable that they would have no expectation of the worst times and and why I'm saying that because when we look at the sequence of the events towards Qiyamah, there would be minor signs and according to many scholars, the minor signs have already been completed. Just like Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that there would, be, there would be dance in every home and there would be music instruments in every home. And then in other hadith, Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that, that the concubine will give birth to his to her Lord. The Londi or the Ghulam would give birth to his Lord, apne Aka ko, his Aka. And it means that the people and the children would behave with their parents just like they behave with their concubines or their servants. And we have seen that all such minor signs have already been completed. And now the signs, the major signs, this is the time of the major signs. And what are the major signs? There are four major signs. The first one is the appearance of Imam al-Mahdi. The second one is appearance of the Jal. The third one is descent of the second coming of Prophet Isa salam. And the fourth one is appearance of Yajuj Majuj. And we are living in the time when all of the minor signs of Qiyamah have already been completed and it is the time for Imam al-Mahdi to appear. And Imam al-Mahdi Mahdi, according to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be someone from the lineage from the children of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Ahlul Bayt. His name would be on the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his father's name would be on the name of the father of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what we know about the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that his name was Muhammad and his father's name was Abdullah so we are looking for someone whose name would be Muhammad and his father's name would be something on the lines of Abdullah or Abdul Qayyum or Abdul Hayy or Abdul Karim something on, on those lines because in in many ahadis uh, there are symbolic things so we should expect someone with the name of Muhammad or Ahmad with any second name and we are expecting someone with father's name like Abdul and the second and, and the, 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 the name should complete with uh, Allah's name like Abdul Hayy, Abdul Karim, Abdullah, uh, Abdul Qayyum, uh, Abdul Razak, uh, stuff like that. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Imam al-Mahdi would be from my lineage. His nose would be tall, his forehead would be broad, and he would fill the earth with justice, just like the earth would be filled with zulm. So it means Imam al-Mahdi would appear in a time when there would be zulm everywhere. There would be no justice. And the, my question to you is, are we living, aren't we living in a time where there is zulm everywhere? There is fitna everywhere? Me and you 
and that this child this kid young man is sitting over here you are sitting over here all the people who are running and jogging over here they think they are living in a peaceful place they think their homes behind them are safe but my question to you is the currency they have left in the banks the money that you are holding in your pocket you think it is yours but my friends this is the money that any time the Federal Reserve Bank or the current monetary system can take right out of your pocket and you won't even know the thousand rupees or the five thousand rupee note that you have in your pocket as soon as the currency is devalued they would have already stolen a hundred rupees out of that and you won't even realize and the and the, similarly the money you have in the banks would be stolen from you and you won't even know such is the monetary system we are living and we think we are living in a peaceful place Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in in one of the hadith said there would be fitna that would enter the every home of Arab aren't we living in that time where our people our children our kids are using the internet behind our backs and watching all of the things that they they are not meant to watch they are learning the things they are not meant to learn and they are showing their allegiance they are becoming the kids of the West living in our homes so we think that we are living in the peaceful times but we are living in the times where even the most peaceful people are are not spared from fitna they are not spared for, from zul and apart from the places most of the places on this on this earth are in a state of war what's happening in yemen the children are, are dying out of finger, out of hunger and who's killing them their own brothers the Arabic brothers their own Muslim brethren they are killing them they are making them starve and what's happening in Palestine we all must have seen that clip where general Israeli public normal citizens are given the weapons to practice on the normal human beings on the citizens of, citizens of Palestine to practice their their firing abilities to practice their weapons we're living in a time where one of us one of the Muslim leaders Saddam Hussein however whatever your views are about him but he was he was hanged in broad daylight and there was no such person who would blink an eye and what happened in Libya Muammar Gaddafi he was dragged out of a hole and then killed what happened in Egypt the elected president was was taken down and then hanged and what is happening all those places at all those places whose government is in Mil in Libya whose government is in Iraq whose government is in Syria who's in power in Egypt all those places now belong to Taghut all those places our brothers and sisters are being killed and there is nobody to bat an eye before the advent of these political democratic system in this world we used to be one nation there was one Sultanatul Usmania and the other people that that were in India that was the Islamic Sultanate of Mughal Empire so my brothers and sisters the, my point is we have been divided and we have been given such beautiful slogans that we think the things that are worst for us we imagine them as they are best for us so this is the time this is the era where there is zulm everywhere we are living in a time there is hardly any hope so we must be expecting and according and this is not me saying according to Dr. Israel Ahmed very well known Islamic scholar he said several years ago I think more than a decade or two ago that he believed that Imam al-Mahdi must have born so if Imam al-Mahdi was born back then he must be of age right now to appear any time and according to the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Imam al-Mahdi would uh, would appear would would be realized would be known at the age of 40 he would take bayah 
when he would be 50 or something else or 50 or something so Imam al-Mahdi must be here anytime soon and our topic today is not Imam al-Mahdi the point is when Imam al-Mahdi would appear he would fill the earth with justice and Allah's Rahmah like it was never before and like it was filled with zulm and the trial and the tribulations and when the earth would be filled with with justice and peace then according to the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the earth would pop its its treasures the earth would throw out its treasures and the rain would leave nothing out would would keep nothing out of its water and the clouds would keep nothing out of its water and the clouds would make all of their water rain on the earth and according to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the earth would not keep out of any crop and and all of the crops would be would 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 be green and would be the earth would be filled with crops the earth would keep nothing and such a situation the reign of imam al mahdi would be for 7 years and after that the jal would appear now my brothers and sisters imagine that the earth is filled with peace and justice nobody is in is depressed nobody is worried nobody is poor nobody has any trouble and then what happens when the jal appears according to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is no such thing that i i'm saying from my own self from the or from the quotations of any other person i'm saying or i'm telling you all of the hadith of bukhari and muslim and other authentic sources that before the jal appears there were three tough years in the first year the rain the clouds would keep one third of the rain and the crop would be reduced by one third and in the second year two parts of the out of the three rain would be stopped and the two parts out of the three the crop would be stopped and in the third year there would be no rain and there would be no crop there would be kahat there would be drought everywhere and the people would be hungry and these are the people who have lived such a comfortable life under Imam al-Mahdi that they had no worries just a year or two before the people are hungry and they are comfortable and they are they have no practice or expectation of uh, of a tough life and then the jal appears and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he would have a mountain of bread with him and he would have a paradise with him and he would have a hellfire with him and he would tell the people to obey him and whoever would obey him and believe him as their god their lord nauzubillah he would give them bread and the people are hungry imagine that and the people are thirsty there is no water there is no food imagine that hardly there would be anybody who would not join him even today the dal has not personally appeared yet in the coming uh, lectures we would uh, we would cover how we must be living in the fitna of the dal but the dajjal as a person has not appeared yet and even is this time me and you want to take the interest based loans from uh, from the bank although we know it is haram we want to do things because of our desires and what would happen at that time we would be hungry nauzubillah may allah save us from that and we would be thirsty our kids would be thirsty who would be able to see his kids thirsty and crying and hungry and he would not want to give them bread how worse and the tough would be the tribulation worse would be the trial and then people would go and show allegiance to the dajjal and the dajjal would give them money and the dajjal wherever he want he would make the clouds rain wherever he would want he would make the crop appear it would be very tough it would be very tough or or impossible to resist the fitna of the jal at that time 
and the jal would have such powers imagine that that he would even be able to make people resurrect he would be able to make the dead people alive prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told in one of in one of his ahadith that one man with true iman it is not clear it would be imam al mahdi or some other person uh, from the companions of imam al mahdi but it but we uh, but, but we know it would be the time of imam al mahdi when the jal would appear imam al mahdi would be alive but prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that one person with true iman would go over to the jal and tell him that i i give witness and i stated that you are the you are the one i the jal that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us about and the dajjal would be furious about that person and then he would say to his his helpers his companions that you already believe me as god nauzubillah and if i kill that person and make him resurrect make him alive again would you believe me even more and the people and the companions of the dajjal would say yes we would believe you even more if you make this person if you kill this person and resurrect him again and what would the jal do the jal would bring out a huge saw and then divide that person into two pieces from top to toe and then he would make his pieces low lay on the earth and then he would walk between the be between the, these two pieces and come back and then tell people that see I have killed this person he is not alive anymore and then he would tell that person that stand up or get alive again and the person would actually get alive the dead person would come to life again and then he would tell his people that look people I can make people die and I can make people come back to life so you must all believe me as your god nauzubillah min zalik the people would praise him and what would that person do that person would have the true iman he would say he would say o oh, dajjal o oh, false lord o oh, false god o oh, false messiah i witness allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i give this statement and tell you that my iman is even more that you are that one eyed dajjal prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us about because this was something prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had told told us already and he would feel such a lucky person that i happen to be that person that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned imagine that what would be the worst condition of people at that time and there would be some people the companions of imam al mahdi that would be saved from fitna of dajjal and we can continue this lecture for hours and days and we would have this series uh, uh, for for the same reason but we can conclude this lecture by by telling the tips and tricks prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told about against fitna of dajjal first one as i told you before that whoever encounters or comes in com contact with the dajjal must recite the first 10 ayahs of surah al-kahf in front of him although his power his spells his magic would be so worse that it would be hardly anybody who would have the ability to speak or talk in front of him apart from the people saved by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his special mercy but if somebody encounters him must recite the first 10 ayahs of surah al-kahf and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that whoever recites surah al-kahf it is the 18th surah of quran in which uh, in which the story of the people of the cave are mentioned that they that they were living in a time when the king was kafir the king was infidel the king was non muslim and he wanted to kill anybody who was who became muslim so they went away from their uh, from their area from their uh, people and they went to uh, a cave and allah subhanahu wa taala made them sleep for 309 years 
and when they woke up again it's a long story we would cover it some other day but to summarize when they woke up again and went back to that uh, when went back to their area or their place everyone was gone from their time and that people of the new place the new era were had become muslim and the king was muslim as well and they they appreciated them a lot and stuff like that so the point is whoever would recite surah al-kahf on jumatul mubarak or would memorize the first ten ayahs and and or the last ten ayahs of surah al-kahf would be saved from fitna of the jal just like the people of cave allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a mojza happen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a such a special thing happen for those people so whoever recite prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever recites surah al-kahf on jumatul mubarak would have a nur from that juma to until the next juma and he would be saved from all the tri trials and tri tribulations that i have mentioned uh, in the beginning and there would be nur for him from this juma until the until the next juma and he would be saved from all of the fitan and even if the jal appears in that duration he would be saved from the jal as well surah al ikhlas is the surah of oneness of allah it is about the purity oneness and allah um, free from all of the limitations it is that surah so if you recite that surah it is about the oneness of allah as well uh, so we should recite surah al ikhlas as well and we should recite and memorize surah al kahf as well so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, save us from fitna of the jal prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself used to pray against the fitna of the jal and he used to pray according to bukhari sharif that allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al qabr wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al masih al dajjal wa a'udhu bika min al fit min fitnat al mahya wa mamat allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al ma'sam wal maghram that oh allah i i seek your refuge from from the azab of qabr from the azab of grave and i seek your refuge seek your refuge i seek your help against the fitna of the jal and i seek your refuge against fitna of life and death and o oh allah i seek your refuge against qarz against loan and 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 against uh guna against ism against against the shortcomings and the wrong doings may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from fitna of the jal let's quickly recite surah al-kahf uh, first ten and last ten ayahs uh, so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, give us the barakah of surah al-kahf a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر باسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات ان لهم اجرا حسنا ما كثين في ابدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا ليابائهم كبرت كلمه تخرج من نفواهم ان يقولون الا كذبا فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَّفْسَكَ عَلَى آثَارِهِمْ مِن لَّمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَٰذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفًا إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَّهَا لِنَبْلُوَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّقِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبًا 
إذا والفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا uh, These were the first 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf. Let's recite uh, the last uh, ruku or the last ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا اعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربي فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله العظيم ٹھیک ہے جی تھینک یو ویری مچ جزاکم اللہ سب کا آنے کا انکل آپ بھی یہاں پہ ایکسرسائز کر لیا کریں ساتھ ساتھ بات بھی سن لیا کریں یہ بھی صحیح ہے تھینک یو ٹھیک ہے پیپل آر لائک فائٹنگ وہ سوری مل رہے ہیں اسلام دعا کر رہے ہیں جسٹ لائک دیٹ سن سے آپ ماشاء اللہ لڑ کہنا اچھا اچھا ماشاء اللہ تھینک یو اسلام علیکم تھینک یو جی تھینک یو تھینک یو تھینک یو ان شاء اللہ تھینک یو عمر فار کمنگ تھینک یو ویری مچ Thank you, Vaisnav Singh. Thank, Thank you for coming and, all the way from Pindi. Jazakallah. I'm so happy. Especially for appreciating. If you have feedback and appreciation, it will be different. I have known this guy for <laughs> almost eight years and the transformation, the road that he has taken is commendable. Jazakallah. So, appreciate him. Uh, like his video. Go on to his channels. Uh, he, he has a page on YouTube. He has a page on Facebook. So, spread the word. Come here, gather every Friday and every Sunday at this beautiful place, Kachinar Park, which is in Ayat Islamabad. And let's Thank you. keep Jazakallah. on doing this Inshallah. amazing Inshallah. thing. Inshallah.